Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. <laughs> Well, good morning. We're back. It's Monday again. I uh, tried to come up here and do a little bit of work yesterday, and we had so much rain Saturday that pretty much washed a little bit of my campground out. Now, not terrible, but obviously in a good way because some of the stuff where we had put in the, the piping had actually settled quite a bit now. Again, this shirt, once this shirt settles, man, this stuff, this stuff is awesome. I mean, it's like concrete, but it did settle on me. And it was just so stinking wet yesterday that Brandon and I just couldn't get anything done. You can see through there and all that where the ditch for the power, all that settled. So, and it's still a little sticky up here this morning. So, I have to get up here with the bobcat and Try to get some, you know, try to run over it and try to get some, uh, get some more dirt in it and pack it. I've, I've got the gravel sitting right there waiting to go, but I was kind of hoping that this would happen. Try to get the ground to settle a little bit. Once it does that, we'll get some more dirt on it and get it packed in and then should be ready for some gravel. I do have a basement air coming in today. Um, I guess they came in Friday scoped the place out a little bit and looking to see where we were at so there they'll be here first thing this morning so get lewis rolling on that not a lot in the parking lot down there didn't have quite as much come in this last week you know it's kind of hit and miss some weeks i mean some weeks we have a ton come in other weeks it's just like you know the parking lot's pretty well empty so not sure what's going on there but got still a little bit up in the shop we're trying to finish up got a got that big open range the uh, insurance company approved that on the floor so i got to get with the customer on it and try to get rolling on it this week and you saw the big dog van up there we're close on it got to get it over i've got an appointment with the mechanic next door to drop that fuel tank and get that uh get that tap put on the put on the uh put on the fuel tank to get that done so got a little bit of stuff there to do i have to run over to the, the local koa um one of our doctor customers has got a camper and his dad's in from out of out of the state somewhere and uh i actually is out of the country coming in from out of the country and it's been staying in it for eight days over there and so i've got to run over with cousin gary this morning pick it up bring it back to the shop so I don't do that for very many people, but uh, but for him, I try to help him out. So the boys are going to be rolling in here in a few minutes. We got a few things we're going to work on. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go check out some stuff. All right. So I just got back from the KOA picking up this old Holiday Rambler. So I hear that my basement air is here. So we're going to run down here and grab this one right quick. Get this going for Mr. Lewis because he's he's ready for me. So let's go down here and check this one out. It's one of the other ones we have sitting out here is this brand new DX3. Uh, it was in here a month or so ago with aqua hop problems and it worked perfect for us. So he took it home, got home about three days later, he said it's not working again. So he made an appointment and it's back up here. So that's another one we're gonna dive into today and see if we can figure out what the heck's going on with. Okay, so the National Dolphins, of course used the Coleman basement airs, but their discharge is a little bit different than the uh than what winnebago uses they've got screws down all the face of that which sometimes can be a pain and as you can see that one was all blown apart so that's a little bit of a problem so lewis has got it out it's over here on the outside being clean now one thing you see how nasty that was lewis got the coil cleaner and then you see how bad this is we'll have to go in here and straighten all these coils up but what I saw that I didn't like is it looked like oil in this area. So until we get in this a little further, I mean, we may have had a leak or something that broke and 
it's leaked all the freon out because this compressor definitely is bad so lewis is going to go in here and you can see how nasty this thing is he's going to get all this cleaned out get the coils cleaned out good get all the coils straightened back up with our with our coil rake and then we did have a problem with that board basically what was happening with the board was on as soon as you would plug that up to the 12 volt which was to the relay the relay on the board was actually stuck and so what it was what it was doing was as soon as you plug it up because the relay was stuck wide open it throw the breaker instead of opening it up and then throw the breaker it was throwing the breaker immediately so we did have a problem with the control board we went ahead that was the original one went ahead and updated that and got it done but uh we're going to dive into that here in a minute as soon as we figure out he gets it all washed out then i'll go in there and put a tap on it we'll see if it's got a charge or loss of charge if it's lost the charge we'll have to go in there with some nitrogen charge it up and see what we got all right now that lewis has got this all washed out you can see how dirty this thing was all that all that come out of this unit so you can see how much cleaner that unit is now obviously we still got to go in here and rake these coils out we'll do that when i get it back in the shop and then we'll clean this up a little bit and put some paint on it so it doesn't rust anymore but get it in here and figure out where this leak is at on this compressor number one okay so as i suspected and i've got my tank of nitrogen over here but as i suspected it was leaking right here but it's actually leaking back behind this tube right here which is going to be quite the nightmare to get to as far as sweating so i'm not quite sure how i'm gonna do that yet we're gonna have to dive into it and do some thinking so the basement air out of this national we got the digging around in here and it literally has got something so far back inside this tube and i worked and worked on it and tried to get it to uh to repair and i could not get any solder in there to fix that so i'm gonna call it a scratch on this one but this coil uh i have the availability to get this coil so what we're going to do is we know the compressor one is bad and it uh and it obviously burned up the, the you know this leaking all the oil out burned up compressor one so this is the same coil that they're using in the 46515-811 so i'm going to buy this replacement coil change that compressor fortunately for us we had another unit like that that had a bad compressor so we've actually uh swapped it out and put it in the national so that's the way it goes sometimes i mean you know we've been real fortunate here the last several months that we've been able to repair everyone that comes through but you know this is the conversation that we've had and you guys have seen me talk about this is the fact that you know at some point these coils are going to time out now fortunately fortunately that coil is still you know readily available in the in the current model that they build but again what happens if that had been you know a high capacitance unit we'd be having a different conversation so you know it's fortunately i had one put up I'll get that one repaired. I'll have it put up and hopefully, you know, if we have an issue down the road, we'll be able to, we'll be able to get the, the next guy fixed up. Now you can see the water that's coming out of that thing. Um, Lewis ran and he had 22 degrees differential. So that rascal right there is cranking. Um, you know, I told, I told somebody the other day, I guess I'm going to have to, uh, you know, every, every basement air that we, that we repair, I guess I'm just going to have to start giving a complimentary blanket uh, to everybody I fixed their basement air because you know when we get done with that it's just uh, you know you can hang meat in there and it's going to be cold enough that they're going to be tickled to death down in Florida so got them fixed up that's all done uh, obviously a little bit of a challenge when it came to that so um, I haven't gotten much video done today I, I had two insurance people I had to meet with that one on that um, Winnebago journey where we saw the roof Phylons coming out, and then uh, this other fifth wheel. Oh, I'm trying to remember the name of this one. Let me walk over here. The Crusader that we saw last week that had all the mice damage, and I spent I spent about an hour with the uh, with the uh, adjuster on it. And the further we dug into this one, the uh, obviously the worse we found it, and you know, so he's got to call the customer and have a conversation because their policy. Is not going to cover 100% of the damage because it wasn't something that just happened right then. It was something that has been going on a while. So he's got to get and have a conversation with them, and then he's got to approve me some time to go in here and 
and uh, investigate because obviously there's going to be several hours of us looking at everything because we don't know about wiring. We know the plumbing's chewed up. We know the wiring's chewed up. A little bit of a nightmare. So anyways, got to look at that. Uh, the, the pet van. That is to a point, as you can see, it's out of the shop. Uh, we've got an appointment in the morning to take it over there uh, to the mechanic. Uh, we're gonna use his lift, go ahead and drop the fuel tank. Um, I've actually got the tap. So that's what we got. To, there's a plug on the top of the, on the top of the tank that's got the uh, dip tube in there. And you gotta pull that, uh, you gotta pull that plug off and then insert that. And then obviously we gotta run the fuel line and do all that. So got to get that done tomorrow, but I've just been been running. There's been a lot of phone calls and dealing with insurance companies today. But anyways, so we're going to finish up for today. We'll be back in the morning. Um, that's the first thing I'm doing tomorrow is the uh, uh, fuel line on that. So till tomorrow. Okay, well, we got the uh, fuel tank dropped. I got the tap put on the fuel tank. Uh, of course, I got busy doing that and forgot to get my camera out. So but we did run the generator already on the uh on the van we made sure we had the uh it was sucking fuel and doing that and it really ain't a big deal you just got to pop the uh top of the cap off and then uh, put the new fuel line on there so it really ain't too bad there's two three brackets and six bolts so so got that all done so lewis and i are going to run back over here they got one little thing they got to button up on here and then this one's done ready to go out Okay, so this big Monaco Windsor came in with a, uh, we, Cousin Gary put a Norco 1200 cooling unit in it. Oh, it's been almost a year ago now. And uh, they brought it back saying, well, it's not cooling and it ain't working. We got to diving into this and the refrigerator didn't have no 12 volts. So uh, last time when it was in here, it had an old uh, Trace electric uh, inverter converter and evidently that thing has gone south and they had somebody in Florida stick a Xantrax in it. And uh, when we got into it, the 300 amp 12 volt breaker that supplies power to the actual inverter uh, was blown. So we put a breaker in it, as soon as, or a fuse in it, as soon as you put a fuse in it, it blew, blows it also. So I crawled up underneath the bay and got the look in and whoever installed that, uh, that uh, inverter converter in there, there's just wires. I mean, it's, it's, there's wires everywhere. I mean, I don't even know, I'm not even sure what they did. But obviously, uh, as soon as you put power to it, there's something wrong. So cousin Gary actually took and uh, supplied 12 volts from another source and uh, we plugged the refrigerator up and actually ran it right there overnight refrigerator works perfect so she's gonna have to she's gonna have to find out who put that in there and did what they did because there's i don't know if that thing's just gone bad it's shorted out if they wired it up wrong not sure but she needs to take it back down so the way that goes so just a little uh short update on that one all right well good morning it's thursday morning i didn't get a lot of video shot yesterday afternoon um Jan and I had to run out about an hour west of here uh, to see a customer. And I don't normally do this. Uh, most people probably don't know that we are actually, as a few months ago, an authorized Forest River uh, service center. And we really haven't advertised it much because we're still trying to kind of get the, uh, the feel for how Forest River does things. Um, you know, looking up parts for like some of these campers. Like yesterday, we had a guy that had a a, uh, a sink that was delamin. And I mean, you look it up by the VIN number, you think there'd be just like what they used on that camper, but there was actually like 10 different sinks. So colors, dimensions, you know, it's just, so we actually went out to see him because he's kind of living in it, but he's getting ready to kind of get out of living in it and he wants to get it ready to sell. So the best thing to do is just take Jan and a computer out there and a tape measure and just start going through everything to figure out what the heck was put in that camper. Cause it's, you know, it's not like Winnebago where they give you a build 
a build number and then you can tell exactly what in that camper that's it's just you got to look at the pictures you got to take a lot of measurements it just it it can be a pain so we really hadn't said much about us doing that just because there's a lot to that and then when the job's done of course when you order all the parts they make us pay for all the parts which that guy his parts would be probably three thousand dollar parts which i'll have to pay for up front and then when we're done with the job then it takes them almost a month and a half to pay you so you know it kind of sucks that you got to front everything for them on their repair but you know that's just how they do business so anyways i'm up here a little early in the morning uh had to come up here i'm trying to i'm trying to help out barrett with the gimpy camper um if you haven't subscribed to him he's a good dude go on there and check out his channel he's got a lot of good camping stuff that he does but this is the uh, block out of his anderson hitch now see the one screw on the side there that looks like it's got a flat blade in it yeah it's not supposed to have that uh it actually got hung up on him and he took a dremel tool and was in there trying to get it out of there and, and it finally whooped him so he said steve i need you to uh i need you to fix this for me so i'm gonna take care of this for him this morning get it all done but uh shout out to barrett at the gimpy camper go on there and like his channel if you uh if you haven't done that already but i'm here early i'm gonna go take care of this and then we're gonna get back to doing what we do here the next little project we had in here is this little sierra well little this sierra fifth wheel uh 2020 model there's a this is this hide a catch was actually mounted back there well the customer brought this into us because it wasn't folding right and that bracket is supposed to be bolted down to that now obviously it ain't and this is all broke apart so this replacement from forest river is 1700 dollars. little just this little it's a little sad that that's the best quality we got right there is that so that's a problem so again very expensive but it just fell apart about a year and a half old so the customer's actually gonna we're gonna pull this out of here he's actually gonna come get it and probably go to the local furniture store and see if he can find something that's gonna work that'll be closer but you know this is the quality we look at in today's world in the rv industry so there you go well good morning it's friday day for uh the long weekend hope everybody has a great memorial day weekend with your families i want to say thank you to all your veterans we uh we we definitely support our veterans around here so thanks to all them you can see the parking lot parking lot's pretty dang empty that one there those two right there are ready to be picked up that one's a storage unit but uh you know it's what happens when you fix everything and people are out camping for the weekend so you know, next time your camper sits down at the big box store for three months, you, you should have brought it up here. We'll get it knocked out and get you back on your camping trip. So I hope everybody has a good long weekend. We're going to go up here and finish up a few things we got going on this morning. Um, just got a lot of got a lot of insurance claims on, on a hold right now. We're waiting to get that stuff kind of done. So, you know, I'm hoping next week after everybody's been camping, maybe the parking lot will be full again. So we'll see but trying to crank them out as quick as they come in and get them done so people can get back onto their camping trip. So the boys are gonna be rolling in here. Let's go up here and get our day finished up. So finishing up on this bullet that came in, you saw us put a, a stove and a kitchen sink. And of course it had the, the uh, Atwood hot water heater that had busted. So we went in here and replaced it with a brand new Suburban uh, which actually has a three-year warranty and uh, eight, uh, 2,000 more um, BTUs of heating capacitance. Now, all you do is reuse the old door, but it's a plug-and-play unit that goes in there. And then uh, the boys went to test, and we didn't have a battery or a propane uh, regulator on here. And they went to test, and this line had been left off, and it was full of mud daubers. So we went in here. Of course, she had to add... Somebody had robbed this, she bought this thing. Somebody had robbed the propane regular off there, the mounting plate, all the hardware to mount it. Uh, so we got all that fixed up. We had a good used battery box. So they've got a battery box they're gonna put on that this morning and that will be ready to go. Now the open range, we did start SealTech testing it 
Uh, this was the cabinet was in the very back room back there. You guys kind of saw us talking about that. Uh, obviously, that's had some, you can see all the mold and mildew and all that stuff in there. Um, of course, there's the drawers that came out of there. So they're gonna run the slides in this morning and go ahead and seal tech it. We feel like the water's coming in in that area, but we're gonna run that slide closed and do the seal tech on that this morning. Okay, so we're back in on this class A with the HWH controller that's having problems with the slide. Now, remember the locks are working, but we lost all of our control in here. And so we got down here because that's all the wiring coming out of the wall that's feeding the slide motor. And so got in here and got to looking and this thing's got all kinds of mice damage. So you can see all the mice droppings and everything else that's going on in here. Uh, they've been living over here for a while and they've actually been in the seat. Looks like they've been chewing on the seat pretty good. So uh, we've got pretty much this all repaired but now I've got an issue, I think, that goes down inside this. There's a metal rail underneath this. So, got to do a little bit more work to figure out what the heck's going on here. But all this has been chewed up. And so, that's where some of the problem's at. So, the nightmare continues. All right. So, Mr. Lewis just got done working on a little Geo Pro bumper pull uh, camper. Those cool little campers. Um, brought it in for a water. Lady said the water was leaking underneath the camper. Well, there's the problem. Didn't get winterized right, so. Yeah, it's a, uh, we had to go in there and change out a new faucet or new whole housing. I meant to get video of it and I've been the, the, I've been running back and forth between here and the office today. Been a lot of foot traffic here today, which is good. But anyways, that's what we had going on with that. So, um, yeah, that was a pretty simple fix, really. So we've got an old coachman class C that's been sitting over here, been waiting on a few parts to come in. And it had an old uh, Atwood hot water heater that was leaking and making a mess everywhere. And it had an old Magic Step, Magic Magic Chef stove that was obviously a problem. So let me show you what we did. So we went in here and changed that out. He wanted, he's gonna be living in this thing. So we changed it out with the IW60 on demand hot water heater. And there's the old stove now. That is not the correct stove. That's a 22 inch stove. And that was actually a 17 inch stove that was in here so mr lewis went in here and got the new 17 inch suburban stove installed so that's turned out real nice and they've already pressure tested it for propane and just about ready to ship this one out well that's going to finish us up here at shelburne rv for the week i hope everybody has a great uh, memorial day weekend thanks for watching please keep going on there and subscribing we're getting close guys i say it every week you know, we just need just need about 100 more. So please go on there to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Remember, this video is Cousin Gary approved. Take care.